It can be exhausting trying to figure out the YouTube algorithm, right? But luckily for you, this expert might have the answer. There's one thing I can guarantee the YouTube algorithm will love in 2024. This is Jake Thomas, and he's already helped countless creators take their YouTube channels to the next level. And whenever we collaborate with Jake, yeah, the videos get tons of views. Watch time, likes, CTR, comments, shares, all those metrics might change in regards to how important the YouTube algorithm thinks they are, but here is one thing that will never change. We're going all in to give you the ultimate guide to what the YouTube algorithm really needs, which is... Picking a good idea that your audience is interested in and using psychology to present that idea in a way that makes them want to click. Notebooks are the ready, folks. We're covering all of this right now. There are three steps, and the first is knowing your audience. I know everybody says that, but what does it actually mean? When it comes to writing titles and coming up with good ideas, I wanna know five specific things. And the first thing I wanna know is what is my audience's biggest desires? Yeah, I think we should answer these questions together. So, vidIQ, a YouTube education channel, the main desires of our audience is to get more subscribers, get more views, grow their channels, ultimately monetization. So what is the main desire of your audience? This is how Jake identifies it on YouTube channels. So we're here on Danny Mod's channel and we wanna filter by most popular. And we can see out of the top eight videos, we have driver swing, driver swing, and driver swing. So three of the top eight videos are about driver swing. This is one example of if you know what your audience's biggest desires are, and you can make videos that, uh, that help them achieve that, then that can help you grow your channel. But desires aren't the only thing I wanna know. I also wanna know what my audience's dreams are. So here we are on Kalen's Coffee Talks and Flows. So when I'm talking about knowing my audience's biggest dreams, it's very similar to desires, but it's a little bit more deep and a little bit more towards their end goal. We have Change Your Life and Change Your Life, um, two massive outliers that are the top two videos for this channel. So if you know what your audience's dreams are and make videos about their dreams, that can help you grow your channel. What are the biggest dreams of your audience? When it comes to vidIQ and YouTube education, I feel our community is dreaming of monetization, possibly even going full time at some point, maybe even one of these. Let's switch to kind of the opposite of dreams and desires. Let's talk about fears. I also want to know what my audience's biggest fears are. Money habits keeping you poor, middle class habits keeping you in the rat race, things I stopped buying to make more money. Creators fear failure. They're not seen and if they're not heard, then nobody's going to watch their videos, nobody's going to subscribe to their channel. They can't monetize their channels or turn their passions into full-time jobs. And that means they'll have to quit their YouTube channel and get a real job and do boring stuff. If we look at Mr. Beast's channel and filter these by most popular, we have, you know, I spent 50 hours buried alive, sol solitary confinement, uh, sitting in snakes, right? Really common fears that people have. So making content about your audience's biggest fears can work in almost any industry. And finally, we have interests, where interests are not so much desire and benefit based, but you know, what are people interested in now? And we know one interest that our audience is absolutely fascinated with, the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, check the title of this video again. So we have Pox's channel here, We'll go to popular. You can see there's a huge pattern here. Every operator, every operator, every operator, every operator. Pox's audience, they really want to know things about every every operator. And then I also want to know what my audience's current beliefs are. I'll show you what I mean by that and why it's so important in a second. Jake was able to demonstrate there how to find the desires of very different target audiences for very different channels with a simple research strategy. And that is step number two research. And right now, Jake's going to show you nine ways to do this. It's pretty good, isn't he? Yes. So we've already talked about this one, and that is just going to your competitors channels, filtering their videos by most popular and seeing what has worked for them. Now, the biggest pro is that these topics and these videos have a high likelihood of success. Uh, your audience and YouTube has already shown you that this works on YouTube. However, the big con is that everybody's doing this. Then there's a step below this, which is going to your competitors' channels and then looking for outlier videos. So let's say we had a basketball channel, we're here on Jimmer Range's channel, and just kind of scrolling through and taking note of how many views they get roughly um, 382, oh, 478, that's a big outlier. Then we go down here and we see 470 and 464, and they're about the same topic. 
Nobody realized what just changed for Bryce James. This is about one of LeBron's sons. And then LeBron versus Bronny James at 18. Again, one of his sons. So clearly we got two outliers back to back. And then you can also do the same thing with your own channel. You can look, you can uh, filter your videos by most popular. You can look and try to see what are the outlier videos. What? I didn't realize Jack was gonna scrutinize our channel. However, there is one big problem with this. So a lot of these videos are old. I think what Jake's trying to say here is that we haven't made anything good recently. VidIQ has a great solution for that. So we'll go here, we'll go to view trending videos, and this is gonna show us uh, what is working right now with their views per hour feature. So this is kind of like a cheat code to figure out what is happening now. Oh, what a relief. I thought it was going to lay into our channel and instead he was just showing a really cool tool that we have here at vidIQ which you can download in a link in the description also jake light mode oh my eyes another one of my favorite features that they have is their competitors tab i can see the top videos from my competitors these topics are probably going to work well you can see we've got ball striking and ball striking so if i have a golf channel i'm probably going to make a video about ball striking and the next thing we can do to figure out what our audience wants is to just ask youtube so i'm going to pretend that i have a technology channel and i want to make a video about laptops so i might do best laptops uh best laptops for students uh 2023 for 2023 engineering students. This is YouTube telling me what my audience wants to watch. If I had a fitness channel, I might do best ab exercises for women, men, beginners at home with weights, with dumbbells ranked. If you want to take it a step further and go a step out, you can look at Facebook groups. So here we are. Let's pretend that I had a, a dog or a puppy channel or in the new puppy and dog owners advice and support group. It has like a couple hundred thousand people in it, I think. So we can just scroll this group and see what is, uh, you know, what are these people talking about? And this will help you learn your audience even more. Give Jasper, give, Let's see, I need some help with this dog. So this was one interesting thing that I found. Um, we have this post, am I the only one who feels guilty? And then this post here, I'm feeling like a lousy dog mom. So just seeing these back to back posts, it's like a light bulb going off in my, in my head. You know, if I have a channel that talks to, uh, to talks to dog moms, I would probably address that pain point and that complaint. And you can do the same thing on Reddit. So if I had a, uh, a Marvel, a Marvel channel, I would be on this Reddit probably all day. Scroll through and seeing what people are talking about, especially if you're talking about news. Did anyone else go cold turkey on the Marvel franchise after watching Endgame? I was just emotionally spent after that. Continuing with the off YouTube channel research, um, here we are on Twitter. Let's say I had a cooking channel. We have this Tweet Hunter X, and this automatically sorts uh, tweets by most popular. Here we have um, you know, gut health, um, gut health, gut health, gut. So if I'm in the cooking space or the health space, I am talking about gut health a lot. And then going back to YouTube, this is one of the best ways to get ideas um, is just to see what, what your audience is saying. And even if you are not getting that many comments, you can go to your competitors channels and see what people commenting on their videos. Here's a comment. We got eight replies, 146 likes. He clearly avoided the one star hotels and actually, actually dangerous locations. I bet he would have had a very different experience. So that is an interesting comment. Then that could be another video idea. And then earlier, I also said that I want to know what my audience's current beliefs are. Asking chat GPT is probably the easiest way that you can do that. Let's pretend that I had a, um, a productivity channel. I might ask chat GPT, what are 10 myths people who are trying to be more productive believe? Yeah, I decided to ask vidIQ's AI coach the same question, but about YouTube creators and myths they believe. The benefit of the AI coach is that it's connected to your YouTube channel so it can give you more insights. And here's the entire list. Pause and read if you want. I might also ask, what are the common beliefs of people who are trying to be more productive? Or I might ask, what are their best practices? What are their biggest excuses? Now that you know what your audience is into, the third step is to turn those ideas into clickable titles using psychology. The easiest way to do this is to use the DJ Khaled method. This is where you remix proven topics with proven frameworks. Earlier, we were on Larry Chung's channel and we saw this massive outlier. Now, this massive outlier could be an outlier because it was talking about a very hot topic. However, it could also be because of the psychology and the way that it was presented. So we have housing market predictions. Uh, the 2023 housing crash has just begun. What we could do is remix this framework with another proven topic for our channel. So if I'm vidIQ, 
uh, you know, we found earlier that, uh, you know, based on their trending videos, here we have, you know, algorithm and we've got algorithm. Two of their most popular videos are about the algorithm. So we could turn this framework into YouTube algorithm predictions. The 2024 shift is starting now. Oh, Jet, this is brilliant. Not so fast. Let me write this down. Another example is here's, here's another outlier. This has 478,000 views. The Lakers won't stop robbing the NBA. It's a great title that's full of drama. Um, and it's also kind of, you know, opens up a loop there. Like, you know, what, what does this mean? So we'll go back to Nathaniel Bandy's channels. Uh, we'll look at his trending videos. And here we see his top four videos are all about uh, Super Mario Brothers. So we could turn, you know, the Lakers won't stop robbing the NBA into Super Mario Brothers won't stop taking advantage of us. Oh, how about YouTube won't stop making dumb decisions? I probably shouldn't make that one, should I? And then to make this process even easier, we've got a shameless plug here of my newsletter, Creator Hooks. So every week I send you five viral video ideas, kind of break down why they worked and how you can model them for your own channel. So the world's cheapest turbo kit on a Camry, um, you know, we could rewrite this as world's most expensive lens on a budget camera, or world's most dangerous hike wearing flip-flops. And Jake's free weekly newsletter is linked in the description just below the like button. Remixing proven topics and proven frames is the easiest way to turn your audience's interest into clickable titles. But the problem with that method is that you're never really creating anything new and you're always relying on other channels to have success before you. So one great way to turn ideas into clickable titles is to apply these 10 ways of building curiosity. What Jake's giving us? 10 things this time. Our editors really got their work cut out for them. The most common way is opening up a loop. Uh, you might also know this as curiosity gap, where there's a difference between what you know and what you want to know. This is also a cliffhanger. It's essentially starting a story, but not finishing it. So people feel compelled to click on your video. So here we are in Nathaniel Bandy's channel. Let's go to his trending videos. And you can see just by looking at the thumbnails that Super Mario Brothers is trending like crazy. That is a proven topic for his channel. So if I had a gaming channel, I might make a video titled the best Super Mario Brothers game nobody plays. That opens up a loop. What is that game? What's, what's the game that nobody plays? And you know what I think would be really helpful to help you generate ideas? is a simple task, fill in the blanks. So rewrite this title for your channel, the best blank that nobody blanks. And as an example for vidIQ and YouTube education, the best subscriber hacks nobody uses. It's really quite simple when you have a formula to work with, right? Here's some more. So if I had a basketball channel, we saw that talking about LeBron and his sons is a, is a proven topic. So I might make a video titled, Bronny James will change college basketball forever. That starts a story, but it doesn't finish it. You know, you know, why is Bronny James gonna change basketball forever? Next up is the easiest way to build curiosity. And that is asking a question. And so earlier we were in this Facebook group and we found that a lot of dog moms feel guilty or feel lousy. So you could build curiosity by asking a question. Like, are you feeling like a lousy dog mom? Do this every day. Jasper, you really need to stop doing this every day. We also have this finance channel and we found that the housing market crash is a super hot topic. So you could ask the question, will the housing market crash in 2024? This title also uses another element of curiosity that we'll talk about soon. And then we have a classic, but very effective way to build curiosity. And that is to reveal a secret. 31 facts about gut health that most doctors won't tell you. So you kind of feel like you're getting insider information. Um, you know, most doctors won't tell you is very secretive language, taking things to the extreme. So so uh, using words that end in est, uh, you know, like the easiest, the best, the fastest, the slowest, uh, that's a great way to make things unique. So this tweet was ready for the easiest meal ever. So we can make a video titled, you know, maybe the easiest meal ever is delicious and full of protein. So it combines a benefit with um, some curiosity because it's the easiest meal ever. The hardest way to build uh, curiosity, but it's one of the most effective, and that is being counterintuitive. So pretty much going against what your audience thinks is true. So you could make a title, you know, why more time won't make you more productive. They use to-do lists. So you could make a video titled, if you want to be more productive, stop making a to-do list. So when you tell them to stop doing something that they are currently doing, that's counterintuitive and that builds a lot of curiosity. Now here's a way to build curiosity that's currently trending like crazy, uh, but is incredibly effective. So we're on Mr. Beast's channel, we're at most popular. 
and we've got contrast here. So contrast is pairing opposite things together. So $1 versus $1 million hotel room. So using our audience research tips we found earlier, we know that uh, sometimes dog moms feel guilty. So one interesting title we could do with this is why only the best dog moms feel like lousy dog mom. And then going back to vidIQ's channel, we know that small YouTubers works well. So one way to, um, to build curiosity using contrast would be a title, the biggest advantage every small YouTuber has. I'm not gonna lie, that is a brilliant title. Keep an eye out for it in a future video. And next up for building curiosity is talking about the future. We have algorithm hacks. So talking about the algorithm is a proven topic for this channel. So one idea might be employee reveals 2024 YouTube algorithm secrets. And if you think about it, the title of this very video is doing exactly the same job because it ain't 2024 when I filmed this or published it. A second ago, we talked about um, you know the housing market uh, predictions and housing market crash. And one of the titles I came up with is Will the Housing Market Crash in 2024? Next up, we have the simplest way to build curiosity, and that is just slapping the word weird or odd or strange on your title. Those are like curiosity power words, and they're super simple to incorporate in your titles. So, so here we are, I'm on vidIQ, and I know that ball striking and ball striking works well, um, and also gr drills work well. So I could make a video titled, this weird ball striking drill added 30 yards to my golf swing. Another hard but really effective way to build curiosity is to talk about constraints. So doing things pretty much on hard mode or doing things even with excuses. So here we are on Alex Katani's channel, this comment. So my question is, what did you do for media? Like what camera did you use? You know, how did you edit videos? Is it possible to do on your own or leverage a video editor? So one idea could be how I grew my Instagram to 100,000 followers by myself using only a phone. Uh, obviously this is a long title. So you could use a by myself in the thumbnail or using only an iPhone in the thumbnail or you know 100,000 100, followers in the thumbnail. Um, so kind of mixing and matching these different elements of curiosity, putting some of them in the title and then putting some of them in the thumbnail. And then we have versus videos to build curiosity. We know that Super Mario Brothers Wonder is trending like crazy right now. So we could make a video titled Super Mario Brothers Wonder versus New Super Mario Brothers. Um, that's kind of joining the conversation in the audience's mind. Um, also back to Larry Chung's channel, real estate versus stock market, which is a safer investment in 2024. So that has three elements of curiosity, um, real estate versus stock market. So it's a, uh, you know, a competition. We have, um, you know, asking a question, which is a safer investment in 2024. And we also have talking about the future. Uh, another great way to talk about um, versus videos or challenge videos is to do what Mr. Beast did and to use contrast to build curiosity in your versus videos. So, you know, here we have, you know, $1 versus $500,000 plane ticket. So it's one, it's contrast, but it's also that versus and that challenge and that competition that builds curiosity. Throughout this video, we've talked about golf channels, finance channels, Mr. Beast, lifestyle, YouTube education, basketball, gaming, the list goes on. That is the beauty of these psychological titling methods. They can be used by any channel of any size in any niche. And if you thought this video was really helpful, here are all of the other collaborations we've done with Jake Thomas.